This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. And by Jamaica. Once you go, you know. Over 300 species of bird have been recorded in Jamaica. 28 of them are found nowhere else in the world. On this episode, we're going to be heading up to the stunning Blue Mountains to look for some of the high altitude endemics and speciality birds. And we're also going to be looking for our golden bird for this show, the Jamaican Owl. Let's go birding. Welcome to Jamaica. I'm James Curry from Nikon's Birding Adventures TV. Jamaica is the third largest island in the Caribbean and one of the best island birding destinations in the world, with 28 endemic species of birds that can be found in just a few days. This island has it all, from beaches to deserts to mountains to forests, there's a huge diversity of birding habitats. When you come to Jamaica, make sure you bring a few things. You need to bring mosquito repellent, some sunscreen, layered clothing because it gets fairly cold up in the Blue Mountains, and an excellent pair of binoculars. I prefer the 8 buys because they afford a much wider field of view when birding in forest. So these Nikon Edge 8x32s are a great option. Bring your binoculars if you're a serious birder, bring your scope as well, and you're all set to go birding in Jamaica. Come to this fantastic island and get all 28 of these beautiful endemic birds. Our base for exploring the magnificent Blue Mountains is right here at Forest Park Resort and Spa. The Blue Mountains extend right up to 7,400 feet and are an excellent birding location. But right here at the resort, you can lay in your hammock and get excellent views of grass quits, orange quits, red-billed streamer tails, and a whole variety of other birds from the comfort of your hammock. Hello, are you James? Yes, you must be Lyndon. Yes, I'm Lyndon. I'm your guy for today. Awesome. Yes, I'm going to show sir. us some birds. Okay. Are we going on this thing? No, no, no. We're going to All work. right. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's yeah, do it. This morning we're in the stunning Blue Mountains, elevated at 5,000 feet. This is a place called Hardware Gap, and you can see 24 of the 28 Jamaican endemic bird species here. It's beautiful montane forest, and this morning our guide is Lyndon Johnson, who's not one of the ex-presidents of the United States, but he does happen to be one of the best birders here in Jamaica. Let's go birding. So Lyndon, the two birds that we most want to see are the two cuckoos, the chestnut-bellied cuckoo and obviously the Jamaican lizard cuckoo. How easy are these birds to find here at Hardware Gap? Wow, the chestnut-bellied is quite easy to find, okay. the lizard cuckoo is much harder to find. I think we have to search hard to find that one. James! Chestnut-bellied cuckoo! 
This is one of the largest species of cuckoos, substantially bigger than the Jamaican lizard cuckoo. It is often seen running along branches or gliding from tree to tree. The flight pattern is very distinctive, consisting of a few flaps followed by long, slow glides. The other endemic cuckoo, the Jamaican lizard cuckoo, can be harder to find due to its skulking nature. Okay, so we can hear the call of a Jamaican lizard cuckoo. We're going to be a little bit quiet coming down here because it's calling in this montane forest here. And there's two birds calling to each other. We're going to try and get a look at them now. So we've got one of the birds that has stopped now. You can see this bird is pretty much stationary right now. And it just shows you that sometimes these birds move pretty quickly, but you've got to just stay at a discreet distance until they find a suitable piece of habitat in which they're going to hunt. And that's exactly what this bird is doing right now. It's enjoyed its meal. It's now cleaning its bill, doing a bit of preening, and is totally comfortable with our presence. Beautiful bird of the montane forests and the valleys of Jamaica, the Jamaican lizard cuckoo. Besides the two endemic cuckoos, the Blue Mountains are home to many other Jamaican endemic birds. As well as the common black-whiskered vireo, which is a migrant to Jamaica, there are two endemic species of vireos, the Jamaican vireo and the high altitude Blue Mountain vireo. Jamaican vireos are common all over the island. You hear them before you see them most of the time and they've got the sound almost of a car starting. Like an engine turning over but not starting. It's a very poor rendition, but hey, I'm not a bird. I've got a small bird here. I think it's Blue Mountain. Does this look like Blue Mountain Vireo? Lyndon, does this look like Blue Mountain Vireo here? Yes, it is. I've got it. Yes, Blue Mountain Vireo. Right here in Jamaica, we've got Blue Mountain Vireo, one of the endemic Vireos here. As we climbed even higher, we traversed the coffee plantations where growing conditions make Blue Mountain coffee some of the best coffee in the world. The higher altitudes of the Blue Mountains provide habitat for a beautiful Caribbean endemic bird. The rufous-throated solitaire is a bird of these high elevations in Jamaica, places like the Blue Mountains and the John Crow Mountains. And although this bird is not an endemic, it happens to be a near endemic of Jamaica and only a few Caribbean islands. There's a bird calling right here and it's got this very, very strange call. It's kind of like this. With that kind of trill at the end. And what makes this bird so hard to find is the fact that it has mastered the art of ventriloquism. You'll think it's calling from over here and then it's actually calling from over here. What we're in right now are Caribbean pines. They like these very thick, shady areas. And there's one calling here right now. It's taken us quite a while to get used to the ventriloquial nature of this bird. But we've got one right here, rufous-throated solitaire. It is such a stunningly spectacular bird. That gray body with that bright, bright orange throat. And this bird's just sitting here calling right now in these Caribbean conifers on the Blue Mountains of Jamaica. Hotel Mockingbird Hill is a 10-room eco-boutique hotel in the hills outside Port Antonio and Jamaica's northeast coast. And we have been developing the gardens over the last 10 years or so in order to make it bird friendly and insect friendly and frog friendly and creature friendly. And it's been working. The birds are coming and they're coming more and more. And on a good trip, you could see 22 of Jamaica's 28 endemics right here on the hotel grounds. We had a whole afternoon to kill before looking for the Jamaican owl, so we headed out from Hotel Mockingbird Hill to search for the white-tailed tropic birds at the rugged coastline of the northeast. 
This is Hector's River on the east coast of Jamaica and it's the best site in Jamaica to go and view white-tailed tropic birds. They nest on these sheer cliffs right into the ocean here and we're going to try and make our way down and see if we can climb down a few of these cliffs and get some better views of these beautiful birds. It's going to be quite tough getting down there because there's a lot of bramble thickets there full of thorns but we're going to give it a go. Ah! 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 I've got one or two burrows here, but it doesn't look as though they're active. It seems as though they're right underneath the very, very steep ledges of this rock face right now. I'm going to have to head down and uh, do a little bit of mountaineering. That was a perilous climb down, but here I've got all the nesting holes in front of me of white-tailed tropic birds. This is the time of year they breed, and right now they've already flown out into the open ocean to go and hunt for fish. Every late afternoon at about 4 to 6 p.m., they're going to come back into their burrows right now on these cliffs. We waited around for an hour, and sure enough, the white-tailed tropic birds returned on cue to their burrows. Such a spectacular bird, the smallest of all the three tropic bird species, right here in Hector's River on the east coast of Jamaica. This Birding from the Edge segment is brought to you by Nikon, manufacturers of the Edge line of optics. How are you doing, man? My name's James. Yeah, man. Cartel from Portland, yeah? Tell me, Boston. Cartel, you got something for me, uh, like a six foot four short board. I need yeah. some wax and I need to go surfing here in Jamaica. Can you hook me up? Well, this is the place, you know, I'm, I'm the links man, so anything, everything, it's here. This Ari, is Jamaica, bro. man. Beautiful, man. Ari, let's get aboard. What's up, man? Show me what's up. That's going to be a little board. bit short, my friend. I think it's gonna be this guy. I think this guy is the right. We don't say no, yeah man, we say chat boat in Jamaica. Welcome to Boston Bay, man. Land of paradise, man. This is the place, yeah? Boston Beach, never wrong. Always right. This is Jamaica, where you can not only go and see some incredible birds, but you can get some phenomenal surfing too. This is Birding from the Edge. Tonight, we've got a phenomenal treat for you. We're going in quest of an endemic species of owl, the Jamaican owl. It's called Pseudoscops gramicus, and most taxonomy puts it in its own genus as well, which means there's very few owls that are even closely related to this unique bird. Some of the local people in Jamaica refer to this owl as a bad omen. And when it does this freakish call, which we've been hearing around us tonight here at Hotel Mockingbird Hill, a lot of local people believe that you've got to do a particular saying before the bird stops calling, otherwise someone in your family or yourself will come to harm or perhaps even die. And it's believed that the saying is, Pepper, you mama, you papa, you brute you and you've got to say that before the owl stops calling. Let's go in quest of the Jamaican owl. So we've played the call of Jamaican owl 
and one has just flown into this tree here. We've got him calling back at us quite far in the distance here. And we've got to be very careful when using tape for owls because once you've called them in, you don't want to play tape anymore. Just leave it because often they'll get accustomed to the call and they won't be able to come back. So we've got this owl right at the top of this tree here. Absolutely amazing Jamaican owl. It's got these long ear tufts, this beautiful tawny coloring and these stripes on it. Spectacular owl of the island of Jamaica. So we've got the owl. We've rolled some pretty good footage, we think, at this stage, but I'm gonna try and bring it in closer and I'm not gonna use the call. I'm gonna use a trick that I learned in Africa by rubbing my teeth and pretending that it's a rodent on the ground and see if this owl comes in for a closer look. He's looking down. He's looking down at us. He's looking down at us. There he goes. There he goes, Jeff. Get him. Get him. Get him. This owl has flown right above our heads here. He's flown right above our heads. He's looking at me. The squeaking is a little mouse. He's looking straight down at us. Oh! He swooped down. He nearly got my head. He swooped straight over my head. That was so cool. Jamaican owl only at Hotel Mockingbird Hill here in Jamaica. That was spectacular. Our golden bird for this show. Our cameraman, Jeff, has also come up with a unique way to try and bring the owl in. He's got his own rendition of the Jamaican owl call. So Jeff, how does the call go? It's kind of creepy, but it goes. right here and it's a totally different call to the adults it's this sort of almost this pleading squeaking kind of call very very different to the adult call but I'm not sure if we've got one bird here or two birds here because it's either flying or hopping from tree to tree but it's whatever it is whether it's one bird or two birds it's remaining very very camouflaged here and I'll tell you one thing we're having a very very tough time trying to find this fledgling bird Okay, so after about an hour now of trying, we finally worked it out. It's definitely one bird, a fledgling, and he's actually flying from tree to tree, but he's kind of not flying too well yet. And right now he's stationary in this tree, but it's a very, very thick mess of leaves behind me. We're trying to get a view or an angle on this bird, but it's very, very tough. Unlike the adults, these fledgling owls like to remain hidden and I've actually got the light on him once or twice, and it, as I get that light on him, he hops onto a different branch, but we're gonna persevere at this. Here he is. Jeff, you got him? Yes! Yes, we've got the fledgling Jamaican owl. He's sitting out in the open, peering down at us. This is spectacular. Not only did we get killer views of the adults last night, but now we've got a fledgling Jamaican owl right up here in this tree. This is absolutely spectacular. They look totally different from the adults. The adults have got that nice tawny color. These fledglings are nearly white. They've got this white downy color as is often the case with owls. They look very different. Often they're very white and the parents are a totally different color. And that's not unique to the Jamaican owl, but to a lot of different owl species. But what I can tell you right now is this is a unique owl in its own genus, Pseudoscops, the Jamaican owl. How unbelievable was that? Our golden bird, Jamaican owl.
When you're heading to a destination where you know there's going to be a lot of forest and thick jungle, it's always best to bring an angled scope. And I'm going to show you why. The look-through scopes are really good for finding birds, but in thick forest, you want to have an angled scope like this. So I'm digiscoping right now a Jamaican woodpecker, and he's high up in this tree, and I can get pretty much great views of him with my scope pretty much vertical, straight up. And here I go, clicking away. He's just sitting on that log there, that's perfect. And I don't need to crane my neck back, put my tripod down, try and look straight through the scope like that. It's very simple, I've got my angled edge field scope, I've got my adapter, and I've got my Nikon D3100 camera. And that's all you need. See you next week. Floor, heading back to a place you've never been before.